Good afternoon. Thank you to stick around to the channel of the evening. So there are different methods to treat lateral isolated osteoarthritis. One of these are the, are the lateral unis. They are designed to treat end-stage lateral wear. But we see in the registries that their volume is less than 5% if we compare with the medial unis. So we try to to tr we, we, we try to find why they're different than like middle uh, unis. So we we'll search about indications, surgical technique based on anatomy and results. So the main indication is bone-on-bone uh, -bone isolated lateral compartment osteoarthritis with a central pivot that is stable, valgus deformity less than 15 degrees, and we must have a medial collateral ligament intact. So contraindications are well known and are almost are the same for medial unis, but I want to, to stop just in a couple of them. Uh, we, don't need, there's a, we, we don't need to do a uni in patients who have an, ice, an also a femoral osteotomy or tibial osteotomy. They will lead to progression of the contral uh, compartment, and we must not have any kind of lack of extension or flexion deficit. The results are not compromised by age, there must be a threshold for obesity, so my threshold is 35 of BMI, and wear of the lateral facet of the patella could be accepted if we can do a partial lateral facectomy at the same time of the uni. So the main diagnoses are primary osteoarthritis and postmenosectomy osteoarthritis in my series. The imaging that we use are regular x-rays, AP, lateral, and axial views. And we must stop on the stress view. We always must have a correctable deformity. And most of the wear on the lateral side is medial and posterior. So we must check the lateral x-ray. And we must have a Rosenberg view under 60 degrees of flexion, 45 to 60 degrees. We must have a long-standing view to check for alignment and to check for medial collateral ligament insufficiency. And in most of the cases, MRI is not necessary to have diagnosis or to, tr to treat the, in, uh, to have a good indication for a uni. So, uh, two different thoughts before going to surgical technique. So, these are basic principles about unis. UK is a resurface in surgery, so there's no indication for soft tissue releases. Second, as the Shams stated many years ago, deformity correction must be limited to the damage of wear. So the term under correction is not really true. We are just getting the constitutional axis of the, of the knee. So we must not accept over correction. So which technical considerations we have on the lateral aspect of the knee? We got a different anatomy on the lateral compartment compared to the medial. We are used medial designed implants for the lateral compartment and the lateral ligament structures has more laxity than the medial collateral ligament. So I perform my surgery through a lateral parapatellar approach. We can use also a direct approach, as Romagnoli has stated, but I don't recommend to use medial approaches as some literature has suggested. So based on the anatomy, and I use just fixed bearing knees for this, for this side of the, uh, of the joint, our first cut will be the surgical cut. So we must, we must link the most medial sides of the tibial plateau from anterior to posterior. To perform that, we can gently retract the, 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 the patellar tendon, or sometimes we must make a split into the patellar tendon, and there are a couple of studies that they show any harm because fibrous tissue or patella baja. The slope of the lateral side of the, of the lateral tibia is neutral, between zero to two, to two degrees. So we must preserve that slope for a, our, for a lateral cut, tibial cut. And it must be very thin, less than seven millimeters. We don't want to cut less than seven millimeters because sometimes we have a problem and we need to do a recut. And we know in unis, when you do a recut, problems are arising. So we want to keep it, our cut below one centimeter, optimally seven millimeters. For the femur, we know there's a special mechanism, or the screw home mechanism. So every time that we go to full extension, our tibia externally rotates to accommodate the tibial plateau. And the ACL is getting tensioned in full extension and very stable. So if we block this mechanism, we have a, flex, we have a lack of extension and a painful knee after the procedure. So we must also know that the lateral femoral condyle got some divergence compared to the medial femoral condyle. 
So Dr. Cartier described this well in, in the late 70s, where we want to put our implant on the lateral side of the, cut, of the cutting surface. So here we see two examples of my patients. On the right side, we see a unit that it looks well. It looks like when you do a medial unit, but it's almost blocking the, the notch on full extension. On the on your left side, we see two examples of patients who have been more than 10 to 11 years of follow-up. When we see that in the tunnel view, they see that it's a little divergence if we compare to the medial side. This is a this is a very good diagram from Matt Olivier from the group of Marseille showing the same thing. On the top, we see our, one of our, of our knees. It looks very well for a middle uni, but it's not well for a lateral uni. We want to, to implant our lateral uni on the lateral aspect of the femur. So, in the surgical technique, we must preserve the lateral osteophytes till the end of the procedure, and we must cut the, the, osteo, the, the notch osteophyte of a lateral femoral condyle to make our surgical cut clean. So uh, when we implant our polyethylene, we must keep in, mind, keep in mind that the lateral compartment has more laxity than the medial side. So we can overstuff and we can produce overstrain on the medial aspect of the knee. So we can accept a little bit of flexion instability, a little bit on flexion, but we must have a tight joint and full extension. We must prevent postoperative varus alignment. So we we'll see about results. We can see that high volume groups got over 90% of survivorship after 10 years. They have better functional results compared to total knee replacement, and there are no difference in survivorship and function in obese and, all, on, and, and older patients. They are, the, the, the mobile bearing knees got a higher revision rate because of dislocation of the polyethylene. So now the recommendation is to have fixed bearing knees for lateral compartment. If you see the registry, there are very small data comparing medial and lateral units. And we see here in the Australian registry that there are comparable results. But you know that the uni users like me, we are, we are worrying about the results of the of the registry that are not very well. We see here close to 16% of revision rate after, uh, after 15 to 16 years that is unbearable for, for a uni. This is a very good study that showed that to keep the knee with slight valgus after a procedure will keep your patients safe. They show that postoperative valgus alignment of three to seven degrees correlates with better short-term results compared when we have neutral or virus alignment and lateral UKAs as higher activity levels compared to TKA in patients with valgus osteoarthritis. My personal series are 173 lateral units performing over a period of 13 years with a follow-up at least of one year. Age were from 38 years to 84. All were fixed bearing knees. The range of motion was similar from fixed bearing medial units. And we, 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 we do chase for 82 lateral units from 2007 to 2014. And there was just a critical uh, infection that I see here after 11 years. One medial, one manipulation under anesthesia and two progressions that didn't have a revision yet. If the newer technologies will help us to have better results, there's no, we have no publications, we haven't seen anything about lateral unis. We still need to wait for the result of navigation, robotics, or smart tools. So in summary, lateral unis is a valuable treatment compared to total knee replacement for patients with valgus osteoarthritis. Lateral UK results are comparable to medial UKs, but we must have a strict selection criteria. Anatomical difference are specifics and specific surgical techniques must be considered in lateral unis. Special considerations must be taken on medial design prosthesis implanted at the lateral side. And innovative technologies has not improved the results compared to conventional instrumentation yet. Thank you very much.